Jesus Christ. Finally, the fight is over. You know, it's not been a, it's not been a waste of time. Definitely not been a waste of time. Hello, glorious people of YouTube, and welcome back to another video. Yes, I got the mowing done. Finally, I've just took the mower off. It took me three and a half days to mow the forage dry, and Dad is now back off his holidays, and he is on the bailey. He's just coming for his dinner. He has reported many a bale in the first field, and he's only done the headlands. I'm quite excited to go down there and have a look. He's just, however, Got a bit of trouble with the bay there. We've got some net wrap wrapped round that roller there, which we're gonna have to cut off. Um, I'll get a standing knife in now, make sure he's got his backboard locked off. Uh, we have, which is good. That means that's locked, that means it's safe. Never go under the backboard if you've not got it locked off. If that thing falls on you, you ain't coming back out. Let's get this cut off for him and then we can all go down the field and check out the bales. <laughs> else is baler do stupid stuff like that i don't know what it is about this baler it's just like one of those things that is always done great baler one of the best balers ever made i absolutely love this baler but just a stuff thing sometimes it's a 2012 and i honestly put it down to the fact that the newness is wearing off as we all know when you get a bit older it just don't work so well hopefully we'll cut that off and she'll run a dream now while i think about it massive thank you to all you guys who have watched so far the mowing video because i had a massive response i've never had a video just go mad like that which is incredible for me so thank you very much if you did watch that and this is kind of like part two because now we're going to get to see the baling and we're going to see the wrapping and we're going to actually find out how many bales this thing produces for us so without further ado we'll go down the field and we'll go and check out what this stuff actually looks like Right, we're up in the field and yeah, there is a lot of bales in here. He's done the headlands, there's 14 acres this field, he's got over 80 bales. Just had to roll a couple out where his net wrap went a bit dodgy and we've had to re-bale them. And then he's got a lump behind where he is right now, which was the first bale and he tried to bale it with the knives in because that bale has got knives for chopping silage and unfortunately, it doesn't like doing that. It's just too much for it. Even though we haven't rode it up, it's just in the swath behind the mower. It won't have it. It will not have it. Take the knives out and it's running fine. So you think he's not going very fast though, about the same speed I was mowing it. Takes it in all right though. The bales are great too. They're just like little barrels. Nice bale. I, mean, look, I do like that baler. It does make a good bale. Here you are. Right, now we know his baler works go and crack on with a bit of wrapping. Well, I was just about to stick the drone up and get some cool footage of his bailing and wrapping. I've done a few, everything's going all right. I thought, you know what, it's time, time to show off. But then there was a problem. Wrap this one, went to kick it off, nothing happened. The bar comes down, so I got off, tried it a couple of times, and look at that. Jesus Christ. It's like the ram's just split in half for some reason. So, back to the yard, I think, and, uh, Take it to bits, see what's going on with it. Look at that, puddle of oil. <laughs> Saved by Mr. Catley once more. Turns out there's a bit of a, a screw in the bottom of there. The screw had come undone and the two ends had just parted. So Colin Catley, the main man, comes on a Saturday afternoon and fixes it for us. But what a guy. Hopefully now we can crack on and get a bit more done. And there we go, success people. Look at this, bales everywhere. I'm gonna jump up on top of one of these so I can show you, because there's a lot of them. Look at that, they're everywhere. This field is 14 acres and 
there's a track out of it and then there's a margin over there and then there's a margin down here and a margin along there so <laughs> probably getting on realistically towards 13 acres 235 bales of forage dry oh that's a lot of forage dry 18 to the acre that works out at, which is absolutely mental i didn't put my drone up because i went to put my drone up and i found out that i hadn't charged it up which was very stupid of me and then in the meantime of me doing all the other footage i managed to break my tripod so i need to order one of those barley's not overly impressed because i've just woke you up but my god there is some stuff and these bales are amazing look at them <coughs> they are solid that really hurt that's like winded me they are rock hard and I actually fed some of this this morning because there was a bale up the top end that we tried first bale with the knives in that just didn't work so I went and scooped a bit up baling it seems to be perfectly fine I wouldn't row it up though my god don't row it up baling it's fine and wrapping it is great these bales are amazing they'll stack lovely but yeah mowing it's just the hard work anyway let's uh got another 30 acres of this so let's jump on also, when I think about it, I had loads of people message me on Instagram and also commenting on last week's video about the stubble and wrapping them in the field. And they're like, oh, the stubble will be sharp and the stubble will punch the wrap. Look at this. It's soft. It's not going to punch your wrap at all. It, yeah, don't get too stressy about it. Maybe if you left it longer, I don't know, but because it's short, so it's not really bothering us at all. Finally, the fight is over. It was a lot of work wrapping all that, but we've got there and I'm not gonna lie, that stuff smells incredible. If it is as tasty as it smells, that is gonna be some good stuff. This field wasn't as thick as the other one across the, as you can see, like I'm stood in a bit here, it's just a bit green, where it'd been a bit thinner and some grass had grown through it. And there's another patch just there. And it's a bit like that. There's just the odd patch that wasn't so thick. And then there's some really thick bits. As you can tell, there's like a thick bit over there where there's loads of bales. In all, this field only did a few more bales than the other one. So this field has done about 11 bales to the acre. The other field did 18 bales to the acre. But again, with those patchy bits and whatever else. And then the bit along the bottom that the slugs had that if you've seen the videos from ages ago over the winter, you will remember that. But all in all, it's a... Uh, it's been some serious stuff. It is an impressive crop. There is so much potential for this crop. I just, honestly, I think if you could get it in and get it consistent and just get it good every single year, you, you definitely don't need to grow as much as what I did. <laughs> you really don't. Because if you can get 15 to 18 bales to the acre off it, like we did on the other field, then, pff, my God, there'd be some stuff on here. If we hadn't had the slugs and that bit failed down the bottom, which was like four acres, and then we had about six acres in the middle, whatever else. And then the whole lot had yielded like the first field i worked it out that we would have had just shy of 900 bales which would have just been 
I think probably a bit too much. So yeah, if you can get this consistent, you don't need to grow a lot and you've got a hell of a lot of fodder, as you can just tell. Now, for those of you who watched me for a while, you'll know that the original plan was to get this in with maize. However, I just can't see that happening now because we're getting on a bit. I wanted to get this mowed end of April, ideally, and we're now third week of May and I just can't see that we're gonna get all these bales cleared and get a decent crop of maize in in time. So I was kind of considering that we put it into kale and then outwinter some cattle on it. However, I'm a bit dubious about that because as you can tell, there's a huge amount of yellow around here. So my neighbor who has that farm there has grown 300 odd acres of rape and it goes all the way around and you can actually see it there. So they go the whole way around our farm. And obviously with that, there's a massive flea beetle problem i was talking to my agronomist this morning he is going to grow some rape at home up in derbyshire and he said he is holding off because of the flea beetle problems and he said that he's going to hold off so he was suggesting that we perhaps don't put it in with kale so i'm now considering a grazable cover crop so a real diverse grazable cover crop that i've grown in the past that i think could go in here and then we could graze that as well but yeah i'm kind of open to options if we'd have been earlier maize would have been perfect but now um duh, yeah i don't know but we've got a lot of fodder off it so you know it's not been a, it's not been a waste of time definitely not been a waste of time now i know some of you guys will have wanted to know exactly what the costs are and i did a little bit of maths in the dust on here because that's what farmers do we do maths in dust seed wise i've spent 47 pound an acre on seed and then i spent 39 pounds an acre on fertilizer i only gave it 80 kilos of nitrogen to the hectare i was told to give it 100 but i thought 100 was a bit too much and i'm kind of glad that i only gave it the 80 especially on that thick one because yeah that would have just been pancake flat so that meant that on the thick field if you got a crop as good as that it would have cost you three pounds 70 a bale which is really good value i mean that is some seriously good value i'm not obviously taking into consideration the drilling the baling and the wrapping and all that because people do all that different but that's just for the crop and growing it up here it's cost a bit more it's cost more like seven pound a bale because there's less bales to the acre and it's not been quite so good but still i don't think that's terribly bad value um obviously it depends on what this stuff comes out like when we actually have it tested someone actually asked me earlier if i housed on my cattle how many bales i'm going to want for the winter and i'd like to have 1200 minimum i think we'll be easily there this year because we've got like 500 here i've got to do herbal lay red clover a few times i've got another herbal lay that's currently shut up under a scheme that needs to be harvested in like six weeks time i've got another herbal lay i've got the white clover lay there and then grass is growing like mad in front of cows at the minute so we're gonna have to mow in front of cows i just can't see how we're gonna get away with that so i don't think we'll be too short silage which is not a bad problem to have i'm sure there'll be plenty of people who wish they've got as much silage as us this winter so i'm not gonna complain uh, it's not a bad place to be anyway I'm gonna head off. I hope you enjoyed that video and I hope you enjoyed both parts of the forage ride. It's been a proper experiment. It's been really interesting for us. I will obviously let you know when we have it analyzed after it's been bailed and stacked for a bit, um, what it comes out at because it'll be super interesting. I was hoping it'd be more grassy. It's gone a bit more stalky, but then I spoke to a stabilizer multiplier farmer who's also grown it and he was thinking that he would get it really starchy for fattening cows. So it might go from being cow feed to being bull feed but we'll see. Anyway, whatever you're up to this weekend, have a great one. Weather looks glorious. Look after yourselves, guys, and I will see you in a bit. Ta-da!